Here we go. We send you a hi. Hello? Yes. Do you hear me? I do hear you. Go ahead. Finally, I've been waiting so long for this moment, but okay. It's all right. Uh, well, I have a, I have some questions. All right. Are you on the stand first? Uh, yes. All right. Actually, yes. <coughs> um, but I'm struggling. Uh, I just want to know the truth. I have uh, some questions. All right. So there is in the Quran there is a the the science. And uh, they they tell about the iron mm. that they sent it from above. Mm. So I don't know if you can explain me this, but I I cannot find it anywhere on the internet. You only see about Muslims who are saying uh, yes uh, in the Quran. It's uh, like yeah, from I, above. Yeah, I, I, I know yeah. that. I, I can find it for you. No problem. Let me give me a second, and we will show you how this is uh, this is nothing but a big fat lie. Yes. Give me a second, please. I will find you the reference. So, you think this is truthful, or you, what do you think? Well, some things I think are truthful, but they, they say they never change the Quran. So, mm. I don't know about that. All right. Okay, this is the Quran. So uh, what what they say to you about the Quran about the miracle of the Aaron? It's coming from above, right? Yes, yes. Right. And that now in the twentieth century they uh, they found that it's true. And how could an Arab man from the fourteenth century all knew about this? No, actually the Quran. Uh, if we go to the Quran and speak about Al Hadid. Yes. And it says the following. Chapter 57, verse number 25. It says, We sent our messengers with the clear proofs, and we sent down with them book and the balance that the humanity may uphold justice. And we sent down iron, which is violent force. So what the Quran is saying, we send with our messengers books, but did Allah really send a physical book? No. Anything anything is given to us supposedly is sent down from Allah Including rain including angels including books even the messengers himself and then here He says and we send down the Aaron so they can kill people with it because it says about violent force If we go and read the interpretation for this verse it says that this is a tool Allah he sent for mighty war So human beings they will kill each other. All right. Secondly, yes. secondly Aaron was not sent down from the space in earth the earth magma is full of Aaron what the science speak of that the crust of the earth have a lot of Aaron which is coming from the space not the earth has zero iron otherwise the, the magma itself is coming from the space so this is not true secondly the Quran says that Allah he created Adam in this in the sixth day so yes. the, the science they are talking about about millions of years where some iron came from the space as meteor and fell down in the earth but the Quran says in the sixth day Allah created Adam and as you know Adam have a blood and our blood full of iron actually if we don't if we have deficiency in iron we will die immediately okay all right so it's a lie when they say that this is about the iron sent down secondly like I saw some of them they say uh, the number of the iron and they say uh, this chapter here is a chapter of al-hadid which is a chapter 57 and this is the yeah, it's in the corner of his uh, the half of yeah. it. There's iron. Yeah, but hold on. First of yeah. all, first of all, this is not uh, the half. Secondly, in chapter 50, uh, chapter fifty seven, uh, is not the true number of the Quran uh, chapter because, as you remember, this is as Uthman he did. So if we go and see, if we look for the book of the Quran according to Revelation, we will find the following. Let me show it to you, Quran. According to Revelation, and then in this, in, in here we will find mm -hmm. 
if we go and we look for Al Hadid. Do you see? Uh, do you see my screen? No, I'm calling with my phone, but you can read it to me. It's All no right. problem. This is the Quran according to the Revelation. What What does that mean? You will notice here in the Quran that what is verse, what is chapter number one, is Al Alaq. But today in the Quran today is a chapter number ninety six. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now if we go and search for fifty seven, chapter number fifty seven, we will find the following. Uh, give me a second. All right. Chapter 57 is the chapter of Luqman. Do you see it? Oh, you, yeah. You see, you can, so the real number of the chapter, which is number 57, is Luqman. So if the Quran today is better than the Quran which Allah has sent, as order that's mean the Quran the one who made the Quran today Uthman is Allah and Allah is not a good God because our Uthman he come to number 57 so the one who made it 57 is Uthman not Allah are you getting my point yeah I'm getting it okay. yeah so this is uh, this is a false claim they come with they are desperate now number 57 the, the uh, Al Hadid is supposedly number 94 okay which mean the real number is 94, not 57. So when they say this is a miracle, how it is 57? Well, this is mean the one who made the miracle is Uthman, not Allah. Yeah, it's uh, very <laughs> you know I mean? stupid. They just so, make everything. Yeah, so it so, sounds uh, very good so, and everything is on its place. Yeah, so Allah is the one who said it is, he, he gave it to Muhammad as number 94, which means at the end of the Quran, almost at the end. So look at the difference. In the Quran today is 57. In the Quran of Muhammad is 94. That's mean the Quran of Muhammad is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's and mean, there is also something mean, about... In the, uh, in the best scenario, may, that's mean yeah. Uthman is the prophet, not Muhammad. Because how, how Uthman he knew? <laughs> yeah. What else? Give me one. Uh, give me uh, more, if you want. Uh, there's something about we made w water from all living living beings, like there's all water inside of them. So uh, I don't know exactly what yeah. they say, but yeah. that is also uh, a miracle. So, so kind yeah. of science so thing. No, this is this is not only a, a stupid miracle because everybody knows everything around us live by water. I mean, this is a <laughs> this is not a knowledge. However, this is a bad miracle for the Muslims. Why? Because the Quran says. When, when the Quran says we made it from uh, the water, every living thing, he just contradicts himself because the Quran says that angels are made of light. Correct? Yes, but angels are not, not living here, right? What about the genie? And the Quran yeah, says... I, I don't see them, man, so I don't know. No, the Quran... Well, maybe uh, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not about all living things like we can see. No, 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 hold on. No? It says chapter number 21. This is the first Just one. everything, just genies believer, and angels. No, do this believer see that the heavens and the earth were one mess, and we tore them apart, and we made from water every living thing. Every living thing. And by the way, genie, you can see them, because Muhammad, he said, the snake is a genie. A black, a black dog is a genie, is a shaitan. So who said we don't see them? They are. We can see them, according to Muhammad. Muhammad, he ordered his example to kill the black dogs. Why? Because he believed a black is an evil color, and he be, he's racist. So he believed that the black dog is the devil. They ask him why we should kill the black dog. He says, because he is the devil. So when the Quran says we made every living thing from water, that is a stupid thing. Sa same time, well, isn't it the Quran state that the earth and this and the sky are living thing too aren't they living things and we see them yes okay so how are they made from water yeah but there's different sky in the no it's not different muhammad in uh, muhammad the rocks he said is they said to him assalamu alaikum <laughs> <laughs> rocks you know yeah. muhammad he says so 
and uh, even Muhammad he says the black stone is going to come in the judgment day with two eyes and a tongue and going to speak and you said you speak Arabic right you are an Arab girl no 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 I uh, I'm Moroccan but I don't speak Arabic oh, I'm speaking. born in the Netherlands so oh. I, I'm um, I'm talking Berbers if you know that all right I don't speak Berber. I am an Arab yeah girl. sorry <laughs> yeah it's all right no problem but anyway this is here. Uh, first of all, this is a, 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 a any any kid can say everything around us, every living thing is made from water. This is not science, you know, in, generally speaking. But when we say when we make it science, that is a stupid statement because the Quran says that Allah He created the shaitan from fire, and He created the angels from light. However, even angels, they can transform into men. Isn't the Muslim the sage Jibreel? He came to Muhammad as a man. Yes. Okay, so was Jibreel made from water or from light? Uh, from light then. Hmm. How the light became a man, water? But what's, what I also don't understand, why you make a religion and if you know that one of thousand people will enter pi paradise, what's hmm. what's the point of making that kind of religion? No, this, is not really, are, this is not an issue for me because it's, uh, you know, about people deserve, people don't deserve, but this is not the issue. Uh, uh, but here you have a point, based on Islam, it, you know, it, 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 it exposes Islam, and I will show you why. But before we go, to answer you about that one, do you see here it says, do the disbelievers not see? Yes, don't I know you, that. One. Don't you think this is stupid? Yeah, it's... Because, yeah, it's like they, because they want who, to saw, argue. who saw this? No, no, us. How you say to us, don't they see? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. like, it's like your father and your mother, they say to you, don't you see our wedding party? <laughs> <laughs> but you were not there like at least today we have videotape maybe but how you can witness for something you never you, you were not there so when he speak about don't the spirit ever see how the earth and the heaven they used to be one together and we separate them but they did not see that nobody saw that secondly no. the Quran here is teaching something false that the earth and the heaven they are they used to be one and Allah separated them but this is not true we are inside the space we are not outside we are not even a small dust inside the space and we are not separated we are swimming in the space the earth is simply like a spaceship provided with oxygen and its own needs to to uh, to function as simple as that small tiny spaceship not even a size of a dust so we are not separated apart what the quran is saying that the earth and the heaven, they are now two objects. We are not. We are tiny. We're not even a dust. What else they told you about science? Give me something else. Uh, well, about the uh, pain reflectors in your uh, in your skin. Because when you go to hell, then your skin will be burnt off and you'll get new ones again. And they find out in science that it's true. I don't know the, exactly what they do. You know that one? Mm, okay. Well, you see here. I mean, isn't it everybody knows that when you put somebody in the fire, you do barbecue, you will get different color. <laughs> yeah, but they 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 were thinking that it's from the brains or something like that. I don't know. Uh, what the brain? This is from the fire. What the brain? This is from the fire. You know, you what the first thing we're born. Yeah, I mean the pain. When you say, I don't know something ah, like so that. About I, the pain in the skin, the pain in the skin, it. right? The pain in the skin. Yes. Yeah, but you see, the pain in the skin doesn't mean that the rest of the body don't have pain. But the skin is the first thing to face whatever foreign object is. Actually, the skin have less. No, no, sorry. It's like this: uh, when the skin is totally burned off, you don't feel anything anymore. So that's why you get a new skin, and you get the pain uh, uh, who, again. Who said that? Who said if the skin burned off, you don't feel anything no more? Who said that? Yeah, that, that's what they say. It's no, uh, this uh, science thing about this that. This is not a true because we have nerve, we have nerves, we have in, in every place in our. Do do you do you feel pain in your stomach? No, because no. but when your skin is totally just ruined. Okay, if your skin, you don't feel anything anymore, right? No, you feel what, what, what because it's actually you will be burning more. You will be feeling more because now the pain. You see, your skin is your first defense system. If that yes. is gone, if that is gone, like if you if you now peel out your skin, then yes. the air will be har harmful for you. Just the air will hurt you. 
So it's the opposite actually. There is the skin have have sensation, yes, but the under skin is even more sensitive. This is why if you have a cut, you will be hurt more. Why? Because now your skin is not protecting you. So if you are burned in the skin, does not mean you are not going to fail because still the burn will go down, not only will stay in the skin. Have oh, you ever heard of somebody? Have you ever heard of a, a chicken? You barbecue the chicken, only the skin is burned? No. It's burning them. The whole skin, the whole chicken is cooked. <laughs> okay. Not only the skin. So, you know, this is that just this is a madness. And here, by the way, what kind of a pro, what kind of God do you want to do that? Like, you know, I want to change your skin and I will barbecue again. What about yeah, those what, hell things are just horrifying? It just scares me about what hell about, and what about great punishments. Okay. Oh, it's so scary to just hear about that. You know, you are a lady, but I uh, I don't want to be rude with you. Do you know that the Quran says that uh, a person who disobey Allah, Allah will insert a chain in his anus. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I heard about that. Yes, mm. but that's just horrifying. So mm. yeah, I don't know what to say about what, that. What kind of what kind of God he want to do sexual punishment? This is sexual torture. Why he want to insert? Yeah, something with the body parts you've been using. They will be punished. Yeah, but why the anus? Oh, the anus! I didn't hear about that. I, it was that's uh, kind of new for me. Yeah. So <laughs> he, you know, he said that you have, you know, he. Uh, uh, let me get you the the, the uh, verse. And this uh, uh, this chain is very huge to the point each ring of it, as long as you spoke about the Aaron, each ring of it is equal. Uh, to the whole iron in the world, you know. All right, and by the way, here we have another miracle to talk about. Uh, My page is frozen. Let us see now. I will refresh my page. Give me a second. Okay, all right, finally, I will show it to you in English as long as you don't speak Arabic. Um, we will go to Ibn Kathir. And then we go here. All right. I want you to look with me in the screen, please. I will put it for you on the screen. And we will read together. This is Ibn Kathir. Let us zoom in. Allah, in the judgment day, he will give you your book. Some people will be given their book in the right hand, and some people will be given to them in the left hand. Okay, what after, okay. What after that? Then he said, then fasten him. Can you see the screen? No, I can't. I'm calling with my phone, but it's oh, okay. okay. I can hear right. you. So then, I'll just, uh, then just fast, and you can watch it later after we finish. Then yes. fasten him on chain, wherefore the length is 70 cubits. Kabul Ahbar said, every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of the Aaron found in this world. Continue. Then he says, yes. then fasten him. It will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth. What do you think about this? Each yeah, ring, think, each yeah. ring of this ring have more iron than the whole world. How big is the anus of a human being? How they can get in? And what kind of God he is 
doing this, putting chain in the anus of a human being. This is sexual punishment. This is sexual torture. What is that? Why? Why? And why the anus? I mean, what is that? Yeah, those punishments are horrifying. I tell this you. This is not uh, horrifying. This is a joke because this is a first impossible because it says that every ring of this chain have more iron than the whole world. So every every ring of the chain is like maybe billions and trillions of tons of iron. How you can get that inside an ass of a person? <laughs> it's stupid. This is not a horrifying. I don't know. It's not that they're in hells big like in heaven. What big in heaven? Do you know how much iron we have in this earth? I don't know. Okay, so this is 70 cubit long, but each ring of it have more iron than all the iron in the earth. So how big it is? And all of this will go inside the anus of a human being. That is impossible. That's stupid. And there he says, and this, this, uh, 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 after he insert it, he will take it off from his nose, and then he says, "If a drop of lead like this, they are describing for you this uh, uh, chain, and he yeah. pointed to the sickle bone, were sent from the heaven to the earth, and in its distance is a five hundred years travel. Look how big it is. <laughs> this is the, this is one ring. This is not the whole thing. It, yeah, it cannot it enter a, then. Okay, so how you?" The, the human being is a small tiny creature and then you want to insert all this arrow in his anus yeah that's uh, give me I something else the first the, 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 until now the muslim they did not succeed to give us anything useful until now we have nothing but fiction and stupidity and uh, what about uh, there's something in the quran that says sperm is coming from out uh, from out the belly and uh I've seen that um, Muslim people will tell them it is from um, a vein mm. and the vein is located near the ribs and mm. if that vein does not work, there will be no sperm. sperm like th that's, their, that's sperm, their answer about so that. Sperm, they come from the vein. I never heard of a vein can give a sperm. Yeah, right. yeah, but that's really what uh, they say about it because someone had a question. Uh, he, he said, well, I, I saw in the Quran that something about... Um, Mm. Sperm is made in uh, uh, the chest or something like that, near the ribs, mm. you know. Mm. And she tells them, "Well, is that true?" And then someone, uh, some from an Islamic website, told them, "From um, there is a vein, and mm. if that w vein uh, does doesn't work anymore, there will be not no sperm. It's That's it because of that vein." But this is okay. And, and, and that one is located near the ribs, mm, so that's mm, their answer. Ah, yeah, but the Quran is saying it's a gushing fluid coming from the ribs, not a vein. Next, what about I say if my, my brain in this case, based on the no, they're not they're not talking about the vein, but that's what that's their answer. No, the, the to verse, protect it, you know, no, my, uh, my friend, the, the verse saying that it's a gushing fluid coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. Not that yeah. there is a vein and the vein get the order the the sperm. First of all, women don't have a sperm. Do women have a sperm? No. Okay, so what vein? This is about yeah, from the from the man, from the man. No, from the this woman. verse talking about the man and the woman. Read. This is Ibn Kathir. I will give you the link to, so you can read it later. This is Ibn Kathir saying clearly that this is about a sexual fluid coming from the man and the women. The sexual fluid of the man is coming from the backbone. He created you from water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid. And by the way, this is what he meant when he says we created everything from water. We start with the sperm. Uh, the sexual fluid that's come from breast forth. It is not a vein. It's not a nerve. It's a sexual fluid coming from where? From the men and the women. Okay. And the child will not produce except by both of them. Continue proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women but vain women don't have a sperm well, they're just lying about that i, was, I, I really saw lying. that they are trying to cover a big fat error in the quran what do you expect women have no sperm and men's sperm does not come from the backbone so <laughs> it's come as it's a gushing fluid sexual fluid and the baby will not be born without them, but that's not true because women, 
Uh, sexual fluid have nothing to do with the baby, born or not. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can make a woman, you know, have a child by taking a sperm of a man without sex and taking yeah, the egg. Good. Even they can do it in the laboratory. What sexual fluid? So, uh, uh, Muhammad, he described, he think, supposedly he claimed, Allah told him, that the man have a sexual fluid coming from the backbone and the women have sexual fluid coming from her ribs. And why Muhammad he come with that? Because there is, uh, you know, like uh, if uh, if somebody have too much sex, he feel like his back is uh, is hurting. So Muhammad he come to the conclusion it must be the backbone. <coughs> Serious? Yeah. Like why? Other, otherwise, why he feel some pain there? You know, and obviously it must be that the sperm is coming from there. So like when he cannot have sex no more. Okay, that's mean. Okay, and then he have a pain in that area. So obviously, the, the sperm is coming from there. Anything else? Jeez. Until now, all of this is stupid. Do you really believe in this? Yeah. If I really believe this, I wouldn't go. So I just right. want to make sure that you so know. Did, did you decide to leave Islam talk them or with you, someone about this? Did you decide to leave Islam or not yet? I'm having doubts about it. You know. But why you don't want to leave Islam? I mean, isn't it obvious this is stupid? I, I'm I'm doing nothing about it, you know. Why it's you, not that I'm doing something about no, it. But it's why, not you that don't, why you don't leave Islam? I mean, you just agreed that this is stupid. So why you don't say I'm out? Yeah, because I see so many people are still practicing, and I say sometimes, so what? well, what if it's true? And you know, a lot of people. Are, you see, you see? Like, because nobody, nobody being truthful, and most of those people do not know. The second you show them, they will not believe in this is existence. Most of Muslims, they have no idea what is in there. Yeah, my mother also told me about those infant uh, killing that the Prophet uh, That's false. said. There's nowhere in the Quran that says don't kill infant. al mawuda have nothing to do with the infant. Because this is, it's uh, about al mawuda al mawuda which is the one which is buried. This is, the, this is the dead body in the judgment day. Allah will ask supposedly the dead buried, for what reason you killed? For what a crime? That's all have nothing to do with burying infant because if the Arab were burying infant then we would not have women <laughs> if we bury yeah, our daughters cool. not only that right. Muhammad himself he used to work for Khadija correct yes so women before Islam they used to be the boss which is the it is the Arab who bury their infant today because they put you inside the box they cover you and they say you are our property yeah, that is true. They say that uh, Muslim women have a lot of rights, but I don't see those what rights. rights. She have the right to be beaten. She's like a cow. You know, you, you bring a cow, you feed the cow. Why? Because you want to get the milk. So the Muslims, he feed you to milk you. Not because he uh, he care for you. That is true. Yeah. And isn't it the Quran says beat the women? Yeah, but not... Uh... No, not really beating, just okay, uh, a slap or something no, like that. No, right? it's really beating. Here we go. Let me show you the reference. This is a, this is a, they lie to you, my friend. Uh, the the reason for this story: a man he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes. Muhammad, he took the side of the man against the women. Let me show you the story. Here we go. It's about a guy, his name is Rifa. he divorced his wife, Muhammad, he, uh, he forced the Muslim. If a man, he divorced his wife three times, she have to marry a new man so she can get back to her husband. This woman, obviously, she married a new husband just to get rid back to the first husband because Quran have a stupid rule. So now... Yeah, why is that? Why is that? If you divorce your man, you have to marry someone else so you can b go because, back to him, right? This, this is disgusting because uh, if the woman now is the one who will suffer and sleep with the new <laughs> man, all right? But this is not her fault. She is not the one who divorced. <laughs> yeah, so he is punishing the women to sleep with a new man so she can go back to her husband. And here you see that the man, he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes. Did Muhammad take the side of the man or the women? He took the side of the man. And this is the hate I will post it in the text for everybody can save it and see it. So the Prophet of Allah, he did not even ask the man why you beat her hard. Muhammad he says don't beat them until you break their bones yeah yeah of course okay, but this is this is mean okay it's okay to beat them until until not to beat their bones 
And as you see here, her skin became greener than her clothes. Secondly, let us say somebody that beat you so light by spitting at you. How look look how light it is. Spit. Spit. Do you accept such an insult? No. Okay, so what light do you mean? The second you say beat them, that's mean you are not equal and you are not even equal to animals. In America, if you beat a if you beat a dog, you go to jail. If you beat a dog, you go to yeah. jail. You call the police, they will come and they will arrest you. And you will stay at least for six months in jail for beating a dog. So what does it mean beat them light, lightly? They lie. There's nowhere in the Quran says lightly. Secondly, even if it is lightly, who gave you permission to beat a human being? She is an adult, even if she's a child. She is your wife. Why you want to beat her? Because the Quran says why? Because he wants to force you to obey him, correct? Sure. Okay, so the beating cannot be lightly because the point of this beating is to make her obedience. And what about uh, Saudi Arabia when you don't want to be a Muslim there anymore? They kill you. Are they are they going to kill you like seriously? Yeah. Oh yeah. Any any Islamic countries actually the, the punishment for apostasy is death. But do, do you have to get witnesses or something like that, or just if they hear that you? Well, yeah, no. If you don't pray no more, it depends. Depend in the country. Like if you say it in public, they can be executed right away. And if you don't go to pray, the police in Saudi Arabia they will send the police to question why you don't go to the mosque no more. So if you don't have an excuse like I'm sick, etc., they will question you. And if they have a proof that you are left Islam, they will kill you. And if you leave Islam, by the way, they give you three days to repent. If you repent within three days, they will not execute you right away immediately. They will put you in a room, jail you, and they will give you three days to repent. If you don't repent in three days, they will kill you right away. Yeah. And um, what, what do, do why do they say what well, in Islam uh, you have a freedom for religion? What about that? that? I don't that's understand not, that. That's not, not true. Have, that's not true. The verse they are oh, talking about, the verse they are talking about in the Quran, first of all, Muhammad was speaking about saying to the Jews, you cannot force your children not to accept Islam, not the opposite. Otherwise, Muhammad, he says, Man the, ladino, the one who changes religion, kill him. Yeah, but this sounds stupid. There's freedom in religion, but if you're not a Muslim, no, you're going no to hell. No, there's no freedom. <laughs> they, they are lying. There's no freedom. That's not true. You know? Muhammad, Why is it in the Quran? There are, it's not in the Quran. Uh, it's not in the Quran. The Quran says that La ikraha fid -deen. La ikraha fid -deen. This is was about the children of the Jews, they were teaching their children not to not to accept Muhammad, not to believe in Muhammad. So Muhammad was saying to them, there is no, uh, you cannot force them not to convert. So it was in the opposite direction, not for Muslims. So like, which saying, like, let us say I have a son and I say to him, don't accept Islam. Muhammad is saying, you cannot force him not to accept Islam. Not the opposite. Oh. You get the point? You get the point? Okay. Yes, I get it. Yeah. So the Muslim, they take it because they, uh, they, uh, they knew that you do not know much, so we can fool you. So, because, uh, read with me carefully. This is the verse the Muslims, they keep quoting for us. This is chapter 2, verse number 256. But the Quran says, fight those who don't believe in Allah. And the last day. But that's for now? Oh, for now, the, yes, for now. Of the chapter of at is the last chapter, supposedly one of the last chapters. Some they say even it's the last one ever was given to Muhammad. So the chapter of Tawbah, this is when Muhammad he became victorious. He killed all the Jews. He uh, he took over the Arabian Peninsula. He decided to uh, uh, and he 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 kicked out of the Christians too. He decided to fight the Christians and kill them all. Otherwise, they had to convert. So this is the Tawbah. Here, this one is not about, you cannot force somebody into religion, because Muhammad, all his religion about forcing people into religion. Isn't it Muhammad, he said, I've been ordered to fight all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah, and there's no prophet but me. So how, how he says, I've been ordered to fight and command to kill them all. Hmm? And then he says, there's no, uh, no conclusion religion. That can't be true. Here we go. All those verses, look. All those says, Muhammad says, I've been ordered, I've been commanded to kill all mankind, except for sure the Muslims. 
except they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and if they say that and they pay the zakat and they do the, pay the money for me then their blood and their property is secure from me so how there is no nobody can force anyone into a religion and Muhammad saying I've been ordered to kill all mankind unless they do this and this okay and uh, there's also a hadith about uh, Muhammad was uh, was uh, with a cat and he does not want to disturb the cat so he cut off his uh, clothing mm, that's nice okay so Muhammad is very nice with the cat what about killing dogs yeah this it doesn't make sense so mm. So they only they only tell good things about him because that's that's only yeah that's hmm. you can only hear good things. I, I never knew that he was just killing and that's, of course they will never tell us. Hmm. You only hear the good things. Allah Messenger said, <coughs> "Kill the following: dogs, uh, you know, and all those animals. All of them they are because they are share one thing. They are like dogs and black animals. You have to kill them. Why?" Yeah, because they say they're um, not pure, not. Uh, okay, but he was nice with the with the cat. Why he's nice with the cat? But he want to kill. Yeah, because the cat cleans himself, and uh, Allah loves the one who cleans himself, like something like that. I but guess. First of all, all, all animals they clean themselves. Actually, cat's mouth is more dirty than the dog. You can go right now and search. You will find that the bite of a cat can be a lot more dangerous than a bite of a dog. Because cat have more contagious viruses inside her mouth from dogs, and uh, but, uh, what about the the? Yeah, sorry, I don't know. I don't speak English very well. But the spit, the how do you say that? The spit of the dog, the water in his mouth. That's also uh, you have to wash your clothing like seven times seven or something time like that. I don't remember that. Yeah, but uh, because he, he Muhammad obviously he ate dogs. And I, I believe <clears throat> he ate dogs for a reason. Dogs, they can sense evil. They can sense bad energy. Yeah. So obviously, Muhammad, when he sees dogs, dogs go crazy because they sense the evil of him. So he hated them. Cats, they yeah. don't. Cats, they don't care. You know? <clears throat> dogs are different. A dog, he can sense a human being. from If, if, you, if you own a dog, I saw a study, scientific study, that a person who is uh, the owner of the dog, he is 500 meters away in the bus station. He just came in home. The dog, he started getting excited because he feel it. Imagine. You know? So a dog, a very loyal animal for a human being, was the best friend for us, not a cat. But yet Muhammad, he want to kill dogs and he hated dogs. And what kind of God he want to kill dogs? I mean, why? They are very I mean a dog is a stupid animal I mean all those uh, but, but why they say you cannot kill ants and why 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 dogs okay and ants not uh, no uh, he did not say really uh, he, he said he want he wanted to kill ants by burning them then he remembered that he should not burn except by uh, Allah Allah is the only one who burn but did not say don't kill ants you know he was he was actually going to burn the ants yeah, because my grandmother you know, always told listen, us listen. to okay, not let us, let us, kill the ants. Okay, let us say that uh, uh, Muhammad, he liked cats. What about killing a woman and he cut her to pieces when she's alive? He's nice with the cat, but he want to kill a human? Yeah, that's A woman, true. her name is Umm Qurfa. You can search, you know, you don't speak Arabic, so I cannot find you. Maybe you can find a new language. Uh, Umm Qurfa, she is over the age of 80. Muhammad, he tied her legs by two camels and he ordered the camels to rip her to pieces when she's alive. So Muhammad is nice with the cats, but he ripped a woman two parts when she's alive and she is over the age of eighty. But why? Why was she? Why? Why did he do that? What the reason? She made poetry. She rejected him. She is against him. But this is not an excuse. Even if, if, even if you want to kill her, why you want to kill her in such a way? You tie her legs and you split her to pieces when she's alive. Jesus, that's. Uh... Yeah, you said just say you said you just uh, said Jesus. So why you don't accept Jesus? I just heard you saying Jesus. You are copying the wisdom what they say. What about you say Jesus? Accept Jesus, my friend. This is cult. This is a stupid cult. There is no way this is godly thing.
God, He created all those animals created for our benefit. And but uh, well, uh, just another question. But uh, what does Christ think about Muslims? Are they going to hell or anyone who don't accept Christ, including the Jews, they will go to hell? Okay. The Jews and... who, uh, who came after Jesus, if they don't accept Jesus, they will go to hell. No exception. And Christians too, who are a Christian by name, they will go to hell too. Okay, and the hell is uh, described there, or just uh, there's not? many verses in the Bible about hell. But you know, don't worry about hell. Worry about your you following the true. Uh, you see, don't believe in God because you're afraid of from hell. I don't believe yeah. in Jesus because I'm afraid of a punishment. I believe in him because he is the right to follow, not because somebody want to punish me. Because if your motivation is because you are scared of punishment, maybe that is a lie. Just as trying that's, to scare that's you. That's so Islam enjoy. because there's you know a lot of punishment, so that makes people just scared, you know. Yeah. Well, Muhammad, he wanted, Muhammad, he used terror in every mean, every way. The, you know, the man he had to terrify the women, the, the wife, the daughter, the the the, the prophet terrify the man, and Allah terrify everybody. So it's a chain of terror, uh, a chain of terror. Shaitan, he play with the anus of the Muslim. He sleep in his nose. He piss in his ears. It's a terror, you know, he tried to scare you because if you don't without me, Shaitan would do those things to you just to scare the hell of you. So what do you yeah. think, uh, lady? Uh, what about this uh, Dajjal then, the Antichrist? Well, the Dajjal is not really an Antichrist. The Dajjal is the false messiah. And this yes. is the proof that the messiah is the true one to follow because why Shaitan, he chose to be a false messiah, not false Muhammad. Hmm? Yeah, the, why is that? I don't know. Yeah, because he is trying to please God. Sh Shaitan, he want to be God in earth. He don't want to be just uh, Satan. So, Shaitan, he chose, according to Muhammad, supposedly. But that false messiah uh, pretends to be God. Yeah, right. Yeah, true. This is why, if, 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 uh, if he is pretending to be God, so why he chose to be the messiah? What about choosing to be God? <laughs> You know, yeah, the because simply, sense, right? because simply, the Messiah is God. As simple as that. Actually, Muhammad, he said that uh, uh, the Messiah, the real Messiah, or Allah, supposedly, not one eye. Correct. Yes. Okay. Why Muhammad? He says that you, you should know that your Lord is not one eyed. Why he he think that Allah look like the Messiah? Why does he think that? Well, let me show you. I don't know if you, you said you can't see the, uh, the screen, but I will give you the link so you can read it later. Oh. Yeah, I think I've I've seen that before on your videos about. Uh, yeah, Muhammad described how the false Messiah look like, and then what he say. Look carefully. You can open the link there. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal. But I am afraid that you may not understand that the Dajjal is a short, hinted, woolly haired, one eyed in eye sightless, and neither protruding nor deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your God is not one eyed. <laughs> So that means he has everything, but he has more than one eye. That means Allah is a short man. Yeah. He looks exactly like the false Messiah, except the one eye. So how but, has, but does Muhammad claim that he's seen God? It doesn't matter. Obviously, he claimed here that this is how it is. No, Muhammad, he did not say uh, he saw Allah. But actually, there's a hadith that says he saw... Uh, uh, Allah, He created, uh, or Allah Himself simply he created it from the pee of the horse. Pee of the horse? Yeah. We can talk about it later. Yeah. Of Allah course. Himself is created from the piss of the horse. And that's in a hadith? Yeah, this is a hadith. How did, how did, Jesus. 
They keep saying, Jesus, why you don't accept Christianity? I, I, I always say Jesus, just always. I have no, nothing, uh, I always say that. I don't know why, but... <laughs> okay, I think. Yeah. But why does it still, because maybe I've always believed this. I mean, I'm 26 now, hmm. and it's like, I don't know if a lot of Muslims also do ha uh, have this. Something just inside of you just... It's, yeah, you just you're not sure. You're still afraid that something will happen. I can't explain. I, I don't know if uh, someone else had this before, but uh, you just need more time because I've seen that it, it takes a lot, a lot of time to just you know to to leave but, Islam. But I mean, one thing is enough to leave Islam. All of the, all those things we showed you is a stupid. Quran is full of errors and mistakes. As long as you are watching my videos, I mean, how many videos you saw of mine? Oh, I think uh, almost all of the videos. So until now, you are not convinced that Islam is false? Yes, of course. But something just tells me that maybe because I've always believed, you know, it's hard. So, so uh, what hard? I mean, it's hard to be smart or hard to be stupid? <laughs> See? No, no. If, if Islam that, is a stupid, if Islam is a stupid, and you are saying it's hard to leave, to leave being a stupid, that's not right. So yeah, because you, you've always believed something for a lot of years, you know, no, and no, when you so, read that's so not what, true. So, so what? You, as long you get a confirmation that what you believe in was wrong, so you should not stay in the wrong. Yes, that's true. So, why you don't say I'm out of Islam? I'm, I'm not doing anything about it anyway, so... Yeah, but why you don't say? Right I'm, now? I'm just Muslim by name. Why are you afraid to say I am out of Islam? I don't know. There's something inside of me. Just okay. I don't know what it is. All right, my friend. I'm going. I'm not going to force you. You know. No, to... it's not. It's not forcing. I mean, I'm. I'm calling you. I'm asking questions. It's not that I'm a good Muslim or something like that. I, I'm seriously not doing friend, anything you are about a, it. You are a good Muslim. Let me tell you why. A, a bad Muslim for me is the one who believe in killing people, uh, raping, kidnapping, etc. But he is a bad for me. But according to Muhammad, this is a good Muslim. So you are not killing anyone, you are not harming anyone. So for me, you are a good Muslim. But in fact, according to Muhammad, you are a bad Muslim. The bad Christian is who? Somebody, his name is a Christian, but he is not really Christian. The bad Muslim is who? The one whose name is a Muslim, but he don't practice Islam. Same. So the one who practiced Christianity, he followed the step of Jesus. He forgave, he loved, etc. The one who followed Muhammad, he practiced the steps of Muhammad. He killed, he kidnapped, he raped. So you are not doing any of those. So according to Muhammad, you are a bad Muslim. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so why don't say I am out of this gar garbage? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. I'm out of this silly garbage. Wonderful. Here we go. That finally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you. Yeah, you need to be brave. I mean, you're holding yourself. You're holding yourself. And inside you, I can tell, you're convinced that this is a garbage religion. So what are you waiting for? So you are a Moroccan. You decide, you know, you are just following the tradition because, okay, I grew up in a society and I believe in this for a long time. But you can tell already that this is false. So yes, it's a garbage. I'm out of it. I'm happy for you. I'm not yeah, going to ask. Kind of hard with families, and you know. So you, what? You don't I mean, I'm not. Struggle. I'm not going to stop. Uh, it keeps following something stupid just because my family they follow some the same stupid thing. That will make us all of us stupid. I want to be smart. You know, if the whole world follows something stupid, am I going to follow the stupid world? No, I will not. Who care about how many? Who? You know, people they can do whatever they want. There's many people they smoke. Am I going to smoke too? I'm not going well, to smoke because right. I know it's, it's it's harmful. So there's people take drugs. But people, they do things. So if people do things, does not mean it is right. The world is full of crazy, stupid people. So we will not do stupid things just because somebody is doing it. We have to use our brain and we have to think carefully. Otherwise, we will be victims of stupidity. That is true. You know, since I was a kid, I never smoked a cigarette. My friends, you know, teenage, they say, take a cigarette, try it, try it. I say, no, 
just try it man be a man even to try to to like make you insult you like if you because in their mind like if you don't smoke you are not a man yet hmm? I said I am a man without smoking this is stupid even when I was a kid they could not fool, fool me so we have to use our brain for what is right and what's wrong otherwise there's many stupid things around us in this earth true and I have I have another question maybe it's not it's about people who've almost died and they see like a tunnel of light is that is so it's a is that something in Christianity also or not I or are these people just lying you see I don't I don't I don't know I can tell you really how truthful this because I have to go there and tell you then anything else yes it's course, just somebody yeah. told so I don't go by those things it can be true it can be false I don't you know this is but I'm not believing in God because somebody he's so whatever what if somebody he was almost going to die and he saw an underwear I wonder what, what it's yeah, what, it's called belief no this is, true. no this is this is not you know this is not the reason to believe in anything this is not the reason to believe don't go by those things people they fabricate people they lie and they, some people they might be truthful but I'm not going to believe in God or not to believe because somebody saw something yeah, but they send a message for us, right? No, no, no. You see, this is not really necessarily to be true. It might be an illusion. It might be delusion. It might be. It might be the guy is uh, uh, suffering from pain. It might be true. So we cannot uh, we cannot judge something we cannot we did not see we did not examine ourselves. So people they can say for us like okay, yesterday I saw somebody coming to me and uh, he was holding iPad and he told me I am Muhammad. I saw uh, 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 somebody. In the internet he's saying he saw the prophet yesterday and he is holding ipad okay i said to myself well at least the prophet he is buying american product you know he did not buy something chinese so that's a good sign but i mean it's silly and the muslim believe in that so people they see and people they can say but we don't believe in god because those stuff if you if you base your belief in somebody say something that's a very weak belief what if he's a liar so you should base your belief in your experience. This is why in Christianity, Christ, he offer you a personal experience with him, personal relationship with him. Not he say, she say. It is you and him. So yeah, but I how can really... I talk then? How can I? There are a lot of Muslims, they see Jesus in their dreams. I, I'm trying to do that also. I'm not, but... saying, this not, I'm not saying this is false. At the okay, same time, yeah. I cannot say it's true. Because as I said, this is personal experience. So you should find your own personal experience. The Lord, he says, knock at my door and I will open for you. So, yeah, but how do you knock? Do you just, do you, do you just talk or you, how you, do you, you do that? Uh, read the Bible. I advise you to read the Bible, all right? Read it in a spiritual way, not just like uh, if you are reading a story. Try to, to live the story. And this, this is what I do, actually. Uh, when I want to understand something, I read it. Or you can play an audio for the Bible and close your eyes. And imagine yourself there, like the Messiah is talking. Imagine the story. Imagine what happened. Imagine uh, 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 like uh, the background. Like, you know, when you watch a movie, what the movie is. The movie, there's people wearing clothes, people saying things, people moving. There's a there's even a music background, correct? Yeah. So you can, you can change what is in text into a real movie in front of you. By God, he gave you a gift. Which is called imaginary so you can imagine what it was happening at that time to be happy in front of you try to live the story try to live the wisdom and try to open your heart when you read it not just to read a plain text so do that and let us see if the lord he will invite you i believe that the lord he will give you an invite and right now i am inviting you actually to accept the messiah but this is as i said this is a personal uh invitation it's not sent from me it's sent it through the Lord using me to tell you that he loves you and he wants you to believe in him so you can be saved I sure want to be saved you want to be saved and not only that, that because you see when you gain when you gain the love of the Lord you will not be left alone you see all the fight I have I have millions of people want to kill me threaten me I never felt worry I don't care I don't even really like for somebody they say to me why you don't show your face uh, because this is make me comfortable I can go right now anywhere vacation and nobody knows why I am. this is the whole point otherwise I don't care 
I am not worried about anything the Lord the Lord when it's time I will go when it's time I will stay and I'm not worried about my future what I'm worried about is not to be decent and not to be what I am you know the purpose I'm exist for to be just a person who eat and drink and sleep you know there's many people they come to this earth nobody will remember them not even their families and the most important for me to be remembered by my Lord not by the man and this is why I'm saying to you if you want to be remembered by him because time will come and Jesus said that from their fruits you shall know them not from their names so the Messiah he will know you from your fruits your name is Fatima Khadija doesn't matter for him you have a Muslim name doesn't matter he will judge you by your fruits and your fruits start with your belief to believe in the Messiah and to accept him that's true and if you feel anything in your heart that the Messiah is really close to your heart then accept the Messiah accept him as your Savior because you see it the, 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 the difference between Islam and uh, Christianity the Messiah he always he is with us he said every two of you mention my name I will be between them I will be the third so right now the Messiah is with us not only listen he is with us so it's a personal relationship it's not a time you wake up in the morning to pray our God is not a government department he opened from five from nine to, to five that is stupid God is always with us and God is always listening and he knew what you want even before you say it so you you know when you receive the Messiah you receive the Holy Spirit you receive the guidance of God you receive his uh, uh, comfort and this is the most important look at the Muslims go on Islamic countries angry the violence the conspiracy everybody think that everybody want to kill everybody the second you became a Christian you feel so comfortable you are not concerning you are not angry I can be angry from normal stuff but I'm not angry to hate and kill you see a person who was peaceful all his life the second he go to the mosque suddenly he want to do jihad even his parents are not allowed to take them chapter 9 verse number 23 it says take not your father and your brothers as a friends so with the Christ you are a new person you are a new creation without Christ you are just a creature who can follow anything that's true but i also hear uh, muslims like yeah like family yeah the bible has been changed and nobody goes to church anymore and the mosques are just filling you know they're just all saying that but, well first of all if you go to the church i live in america uh, if you have a house close to the church your price the house price is low because the churches they are over flooded to the point they are making uh, service in the in the stadium because churches don't fit no more so what they are talking about secondly maybe in some places in europe this is why it's doomed those countries that will have uh, where in holland where they have a prostitution in the in the in the display this is not a christian country this is doomed this is why it's doomed so christianity is something and what people do is something else secondly well uh, muslim they say our mosque is full where 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 the mosque are full if if the Muslims are uh, the mosque are full then we should not have people like you are not in the mosque we should not we should have mosque always full but the fact Muslims they go only to show off as an example in the Middle East number one reason for people to go to the mosque you will see the mosque door is so busy have you ever been in, in Morocco yes okay number one reason for to go to the mosque it was to go to pee not to pray it is the only bathroom open for public there's a mosque in every corner so people want to pee they go to the mosque but nobody's going to pray you, you look at the inside you see everybody going to the bathroom yeah and they also steal shoes there so and yeah forget about stealing shoes this is a business but uh, 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 number one reason to go to the mosque is a bathroom there's no public bathroom you know, I, like when I was a, I was a kid in the Middle East, this, this, what is this building? Why people keep coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out? I mean, it's very busy. So I went in to see what's happening, and I followed them. 
and then I, I ended the bathroom. The mosque is empty. There's nobody in the mosque. Everybody is going to the bathroom. But aren't just they going to do the washing or no? Just the, 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 to 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 piss. You know, there's some they want to go and pray. Yes, but the majority of people in the you know, especially in busy area, it's to go to the bathroom. So and since when you know, if people go to pray, that's mean they are uh, religious. Most of Muslims they do that because they have to. Otherwise, they will be. The neighbor will look at them. He did not go to pray. Oh, he did not open his store to pray. He is a pagan. Allahu Akbar. He is a atheist. You know. So they do it based on fear. Even the Quran says, uh, Muhammad he told them to the Arab, "Don't say, don't say we believe. Say we are Muslims." Don't say what? Don't say we believe. Say we are Muslim. We surrender. So why why Muhammad saying don't say that? Because simply you do not need to be a believer to be a Muslim. True. This is the Quran, chapter 49, verse number 14. The Arab they say, we believe. Allah say to them, supposedly, the one is talking to Allah. You do not believe, but say we are Muslims, not submit. This is false translation. Okay, so what kind of God he says? Don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Yeah, but doesn't God say somewhere else if you don't believe in me, then uh, yeah, if you don't say shahada, yeah, yeah, say shahada, here we go. Here is saying, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. So Oh, what he wants from you to say, I believe, but not necessarily to believe. You see, here he says to them, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Those who speak Arabic, they knew what I'm talking about. There is no way Jesus, he will accept somebody by saying to him, don't say, uh, don't say, don't, don't say I believe, say I'm Christian. That would be stupid. Jesus says the opposite. And even the verse says, for faith never enter your heart. Faith never enter your heart. So how how you are saying to them, say I'm a Muslim. How somebody faith never enter his heart, and you say to him, say I'm a Muslim. That's madness. But because Islam is religion based on hypocrisy, it's not important to be a believer. What is important to say, I'm a Muslim. Faith, faith never enter your heart. True. And who is the one talking here? This is Allah Himself saying to the Muslims, "Don't say we believe. Say, say, we surrender to Islam." So they surrender. This is what happened. He forced them by sword. They surrender. Aslamna. قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا the Arab they say we believe say which means Muhammad tell them don't say we believe say we became Muslims for Islam never faith never enter our faith so how they became Muslims and Islam they never enter their faith their heart <laughs> and how you say to them say we are Muslims and yet they have no faith in their heart yeah that's uh, ridiculous that's, so uh, all the story is he want them to convert to islam say shahada you believe or not who care just say i am a, i am i am a muslim and that's it he knew that nobody believed in him he forced them by the sword they surrender that is true that's true so what do you think do you think uh, the Messiah is the way to follow? I think uh, the God of the Christians is much nicer than Allah, right? It's not about nicer. It's about you know. Uh, it's not. Yeah, about I nicer. know. You know what? It's um, you feel more love, loved. Hmm. Uh, you don't have to be scared. And like the Messiah in, in himself, love. he loves you. His message is about love, about forgiveness. God talks more about. Punishment, they have to obey and punishment and obey punishment. Islam is based on terrorism, 
about forcing you to do things. They talk more about punishment. Christianity. Christ is about love me for I love you. You see, even now you don't believe in him yet, right? Still, he loves you, and that's why yeah. he wants you to be saved. And that's why you know I would be happy really to hear from you that today that you want to accept the Messiah as a savior. Yeah, I want to be loved and I want to be saved. So I accept the Messiah. And he will, you know, he loves you already. But he now if you if you accept him, now you belong to him. And the second you belong to him, you are in his house. That's why we Christians, when we ask the Messiah how to pray, he says, Say they pray like this Our Father out of heaven. God for us is a father, not just God. And there's a huge difference. So the father is our provider, our protector, our loving. You know, your father, he worked all his life to feed you, to make you grow. That's exactly how God is for us, our father. So the second you accept the Messiah, you accept it to be a child of God, where God is your father. You are not slave. You are not a servant. You are a daughter of God. And daughter of God here does not mean God have sex with our mother. No, no, I understand. Yeah, this is very high spiritual value. But so, when they say uh, Jesus in the, is the Son of God, they just mean he's from God, not literally the Son. No, he right? is. No, when we say Jesus is Son of God, simply Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. So God, he came to us in an image of a person of a man. So he is. So when we say the Son of God, simply God, you know, like. We call God Almighty, correct? Yes. And what Almighty mean? Yeah, that He can do everything. He can be. He everything. can. He is what He is. You can. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, He's Almighty or not. So He is. He is. What He is. This was when when Moses asked him, "What I will tell my people about you? What's your name?" You see, in Christianity, God does not have a name really. He told him, "I am who I am." He did not give him a name. That's why the Jews, when they speak about God, they don't give a name to God because he is very high to name him. You know, he is like beyond naming. There's no names can describe him. So God, he came to us as a man, but yet still he is God. And that is Jesus. That's why Jesus, he is a man, yet he can raise people from death. He can forgive sin. He can make the blind see. He can do things nobody can do. So being a man did not change. The nature that he is God in the same time. So he has the nature of a man, so we can see him. Otherwise, nobody can see God, for he is so glorious. He humble himself, so you can see him as a person. That is true. So what do you think about accepting the Messiah now? Yes. You accept him? I accept him. Amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, you made me so happy, really. I'm really tired from speaking for long with many people, but today you you made you made my day come to be a happy day. So I want to say thank you and may the Lord bless your heart and guide you and stay with you. And I ask all the Christians here. I do not know your, your real name, but I ask to all the Christians who they are listening, please pray to this lady from Morocco, who accepted the Messiah as her personal savior, and trust me, you will never regret what you just did. And you will see your life will change, totally will change. Yeah, my heart, my heart is beating right now. So I'm sure, and actually, I can tell it from your voice. Uh, but don't be, you know, this is a good thing. And even, you know, like uh, uh, you will feel, you will feel a change in your life right away. You will feel it. You will see that you are a new person. Hate will 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 run away from your heart. Anger will run away from your heart. You are a new person. Even the Bible says that we have to be reborn again with Jesus in order to be the children of God. So today you are reborn again. You are a new person. You are not just a person as before you call me. You are totally a new person. And the Lord will be with you, my friend. And let me say my sister, because now you are my sister in Christ. So I'm really happy for you. And I will be happy anytime you have a questions about uh, Christianity. I will be happy to help you. Uh, I want you to, uh, uh, you have your phone, right? I mean, I don't know if you have a computer. You can download the Bible from the internet. And yeah, I've done it. I uh, have an app with Bible. All right. Uh, so start, read it. start reading from the book of John, 
All right. From John. Okay. Book of John. Yes. And read all the whatever you wish. I mean, uh, and uh, this is something. Sometimes I do. I go and I don't decide really what to go. I just put the Bible in front of me, and I open it. And whatever it is, that's this is the message of the Lord for me for today. So you can do that for, for from time to time. But I advise you to start reading from the beginning, so you can understand how the Messiah, which is the Word of God, come to us as a man. And he is with us, and he is the only salvation. And you will see an amazing wisdom, not like a stupid talk in the Quran, you know, somebody trying to make some poetry, and even the language is bad. Uh, it's wisdom, it's amazing, it's so beautiful, it's a spiritual, and it is speaking to you today, even though we are 2,000 years after Jesus. Every word Jesus said 2,000 years ago, it fit with my life today, which is amazing. And this is why we believe that Christ's words is a living word. Living word is not about preserving the word only in the book. It's about that this word live with us. Not only a word said 2,000 years doesn't match for today. Go and read anything Jesus said, and you will find it match with your life today. Same time when the Muslim, they say to you that the Bible is corrupt. That is additional proof to leave Islam because if the Muslim they say that the one who sent the Injil is Allah, correct? Yes. Okay. So how Allah He sent the book and He don't want to protect it? That yeah, it's is, like the Muslims will say that it's like this: uh, God sent the Torah. Yes. Then He made a mistake. Then He sent the Bible. Ah, then He, na he made another mistake, and then He sent the Quran. Well, why and you want to follow like last time? Why you want to follow God who uh, keeps saying, making mistakes? Yeah, that's that's something I just I think okay if God is you know good and all knowing and the, why why he makes mistakes like that. Let me show you how stupid Muhammad is. Chapter yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah I know, I know. But I will give you an example of, about stupidity. One of the things I hate is stupidity. Chapter three, verse number twenty-eight, sixty-five. Uh, Muhammad is uh, is debating with the Christian. So imagine now Muhammad calling Christian prince and he want to get him busted. So look what Muhammad he says to Christian Prince. All people of the scriptures, Jews and Christians, why you dispute about Ibrahim, which means Abraham, while the Torah and the gospel were not revealed till after him? Have you no sense? Which means, are you stupid? Yes. But do you see how stupid this is? Because if the one who came after Ibrahim, he cannot debate about Ibrahim, that's when Muhammad cannot debate about Moses. And Muhammad cannot debate about Jesus because he came at the end. That's true. And yeah. here you see that the one who made the Quran cannot be God, for he is officially a stupid idiot. How you say to me that how you can debate about Abraham and you came after Abraham as if he is the one who was there before them? This is, will be a valid argument if he was before the Jews, before the Christians. But you came long after all of them. But it took like 20 years for them to make it all good. It doesn't Just, matter how, you know, I mean, I mean look yeah. how stupid. We assume that this is supposed to be Allah is talking, not Muhammad. But look how stupid this statement is. So look, like imagine I go to a restaurant and I say, okay, this meal is for me. They say, no, we are here before you. huh? And then I say to them, well, the one who come at the end, he cannot ask for the meal. You eat it. You are the one who came at the end. <laughs> yes. You are the last one in the line. So here you see the stupidity of the Quran and the author of the Quran. So how this is, can be from God? Same time when the Muslim they say that the Bible is corrupt. The Quran says the opposite. The Quran yeah, says. Yeah, it's like the yeah. The and uh, they, I've read also they say that Muhammad is in the Bible like uh, the name of uh, Ahmed or something like that. I just, well, this is this is again a natural proof that Islam is false because. If Muhammad is in the Bible, why Allah don't protect the Bible then? I mean, what the point then? If Allah put Muhammad's name in the Bible or a prophecy about him, and how come the Christian did not take those prophecy? As long as they don't like Muhammad. <laughs> as long as they corrupt the book anyway. And look here, the Quran in front of us, chapter 2, verse number 89 says, that I can go to your YouTube channel even if I, um, yeah, it can. Yes, I can open it right now. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yes. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you longer. I'm really happy for you for accepting the Messiah, my friend and my sister. I do not know your name. I do not. I don't want to know your name. Keep it private, please, for yourself, for your safety. But today, you are a new person. 
and I assure you before I sleep today I will have a special prayer just for you from my heart as a sister in Christ so the Lord he might take your in your hand and be with you and open your heart to know him better and better and I hope that time will come and you yourself you will be a person a woman who is a child of God who will bring more Muslims to Christ because it is a blessing for us not only to accept the Messiah but to bring people to him that will make him more happy from you that is your reward really that you bring your family bring your friends bring your neighbors to know Christ and that will make something beautiful out of you you came to this earth not just to eat and sleep not even just to accept Jesus I came to this earth so I can serve and I can be a person who can be helpful so happiness will be in the in the in the in the in the kingdom of God today for you accepting the Messiah you are from Morocco and you have a message for all the Moroccan people like you to accept the Messiah and come to him and actually I noticed that a lot of Moroccan accepting the Messiah it's amazing how big the number is so you today is just a new soul from Morocco who follow the Lord and we will pray all of us for you do you want to say anything to the Christians in the chat before you leave I want to say thank you for all your support and that I finally finally decided what I want to do with this and I think I've made the right decision I mean to that you did trust me you did thank you my thank you my dear sister for calling and thank feel you free very to call much. me again thank anytime you. you want all right take care take care bye bye bye